Alright, in this video I'm going to show you how to test your mass airflow sensor. And remember our mass airflow sensor is critical to our workhorse chassis because it tells the computer how much air is entering the engine so the computer knows how to calculate and deliver the correct fuel. It's a fairly common item to fail on us and almost any workhorse chassis once you get above you know 70,000 miles you should have already replaced your mass airflow sensor by now. We changed ours probably about 35, 40,000 miles uh, on ours. I was getting a, I was getting a knock sensor codes and stuff because I was running Celine due to a bad mass airflow sensor. But one, one way, excuse, one way to test this is we want to. I'm gonna do a rolling start. I'm on the side of the road right now. The engine just idling. <clears throat> I'm gonna do a rolling start. I don't know by about 10 miles an hour, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the my pedal to the floor, do a wide open throttle. And we should be getting up at least 230 grams per second. That's this number right here. So right now, normal idling, you'll see between 7 and 10 grams per second. So though I'm hoping to see at least 230. Uh, keep in mind, oh, it got a misfire, didn't it? It does that sometimes. But um, uh, keep in mind, my my. Keep in mind my mass airflow sensor, I've probably got you know 30, 40,000 miles on it right now, and it hasn't been cleaned in probably a couple of years. So I don't know if I hit the 230 mark or not. I hope so. If I don't, I'll do I'll do some cleaning and make sure I do. So, but another thing to watch when I do this test, you're gonna watch we're in closed loop now, but usually if under wide open throttle, heavy load, you will momentarily go open loop. And you'll notice when you go open loop, your air fuel ratio will, will go rich. And that number will change also because you you watch I got the RPM set here I got my speed all that stuff so you'll be able to watch that so all right we're on the side of the road and it's middle of the night no one's around so let's pull out and see how this works getting off the shoulder of the road Let's go wide open throttle. All right, so it looked like I passed the test. I got well over 230 grams per second. And just a side note, grams per second, that equals to about, uh, if I calculated it right, about 47 gallons of air per second. If you, imagine, if you can imagine a milk jug full of one gallon of air. Well, every split second, we're running through about uh, 47 gallons. Uh, Okay, I wanted to clarify that 47 gallons per second, that would be at 230 grams per second. So under a wide open throttle situation, that's how many gallons of air is passing through that mass airflow sensor. So if you perform this test, because I'm doing this with the Scan Gauge 3, which every workhorse owner should have one of these tools. Don't leave town, don't leave town without it. And this is a test you should do perform, you know, a couple times a year just to make sure your mass airflow sensor is doing its job. If you find you're not hitting 230 grams per second, maybe you're only coming in at, you know, 220 or something, then you know it needs cleaning and or replaced. I would just probably replace it if it, if it hadn't been replaced already. Okay, so same on I'm on the side of the road again. I'm going to switch over here to some normal, some other numbers. My fuel trims, we'll close loop, air fuel ratio, um, coolant temperature. Uh, I'm going to screw down the road a little bit here just to show you how, how my numbers act. Alright, back on the road we go. Lot of tangles. Right. I 
I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a change. Hang on. I decide to do something different. Hang on. Get back on. Goodness gracious. I'm going to put this over onto um, miles per hour so you can see what I'm doing. Where are you at? Where's my miles per hour? Speed. There we go. Alright. So that way you get an idea of how fast I'm going and how my fuel trim numbers are acting. Slide hill right now. Now we just downshifted. So we're dropping the fourth gear. See how our fuel trims jumped up just a little bit because it needed that extra fuel with those higher RPMs. Okay, now we're, we're kind of dropping over a hill. And you see, we, you'll see some neg negative numbers on short term because we'll have probably no load. All right, going back up another little hill. give you an idea of uh, what normal numbers should look like. Because the important thing, we want to keep it in single digits. Unless you have a bank system. If you have a bank system installed, you could run 12s or even as high as 15s. And that would be considered normal. Because the bank system flows more air. If you're going to flow more air, you need to flow more fuel, of course. I'm sure I'm liking this new tool. Now we're going back down another steady hill. You'll notice how the fuel trims have respond to it. I think I'll do another test later where I'll, I'll show the engine load so that way you can see uh, how engine load is, is affected with the fuel trims and the engine load kind of goes hand in hand. Let me punch it to the floor. We're going up a little bit, a little hill here. open loop. Okay, then I take my foot out of it, we instantly goes back goes back closed loop again. Because when you're in open loop it's something called fuel enrichment mode. It gives you extra fuel to because you know the computer knows we need that extra power to get up and over that hill or, or to make a pass. Uh, well, I guess that'll do it for this little video. Have a great night. Have a blessed day. See you later. Bye.